Hi there, this is Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags, and this is the weekly for uh, August 29th, 2018, and this is your place for worship encouragement to help you elevate your pra praise. So it is uh, kind of cool and rainy, and I am dressed for the weather for a little bit cooler. Hey Rosie, uh, for the clear, cooler weather now, we're preparing. I know that in a lot of other places it is still very hot and humid. Uh, I was just talking with someone in New Jersey and he said it's a heat wave there. So wherever you are, I hope that you are staying comfortable in wherever you are. So um, just a couple of thoughts that I Hey, Tiffany. Uh, what I've been thinking about and what's been on my when, on my heart, uh, and one of the the thing that I've been thinking about is how to love well. And we've been talking uh, a lot about unity, kind of in this group, other groups, and just creating unity, creating community and unity. Unity does not mean that we all have to agree on the same thing. It means that we can still be in community uh, and have unity. So that's the diversity of the, the body is that we are not all the same. That means we're not thinking the same. We can actually have different thoughts and we can still love and honor one another. But what happens when something is, is amiss and that there is a problem between you and I or you and someone else or, or groups of people? And what does the Bible have to say about that? Now, if you know me uh, at all in in real life and ha are in relationship with me, you know that I don't shy away from confrontation. Now, someone who hates confrontation would say that I like confronta confrontation, but in fact, I do not love confrontation. I don't even like confrontation, but what I do love is people, and I love you. If you're in my life, I love you, and what confrontation does what I think of confrontation is that means I am willing to go to the uncomfortable place to get rid of this block that is between you and me so that it can be resolved and that it can be eradicated and then we can actually move past that and come back into unity. And so I just want to say, if you've just been joining me, we're talking uh, on the weekly and what's on my heart is how to love well. And I think that confrontation is a requirement for loving well. And it's not about you um, point, a uh, finger pointing or, or even not coming into the, the conversation with someone that without the possibility of saying you're wrong saying sorry, saying um, it's okay to disagree, and all of that. And so I just want to actually talk about what the Bible has to say about it. Uh, we, I think we, if you've been Christian for you know longer than five minutes, you probably are familiar with Matthew 18. It's Jesus is talking and he's dealing with confrontation and what to do. And it's sandwiched, I, I found this interesting, it's sandwiched uh, between the parable of the lost lamb and the unlimited forgiveness, so when Peter is asking. So sandwiched between those two thoughts, Jesus says this about restoring broken relationships. And I'm reading from the Passion, this is Psalm 18, I mean, sorry, Matthew 18, uh, verse 15. 15. Uh, if your fellow believer sins against you, you must go to that one privately and attempt to resolve the matter. If he responds, your relationship is restored. Yay! But if he, his heart is close to you, then you go to him again, ta taking one or two with you, and you'll be fulfilling what the scripture teaches when it says every word must be verified by the testimony of two or three witnesses. And if he refuses to listen, then share the issue with the entire church in hopes of restoration. The idea is always restoration, not being right which we talked about last week. If he still refuses to respond, disregarding the fellowship of his church family, you must disregard him as though he were an outside as a, and on the same level as an unrepentant sinner. I'm just gonna end it there. Um, he talks a couple more verses and then, Peter, uh, then Peter's asking that question, uh, how often do I forgive? And so last week we had talked a little bit about how often do you forgive that love actually covers a multitude of sins, that it is actually not Jesus's or Christ's love of us, but it is our love of each other that covers that multitude of sins. 
but in the restoration and the confrontation is actually, I can actually take these off, that you love that person so much that they are, there's going to be nothing in between you and them. This is really, really powerful stuff. And this is what unity is all about. Uh, and again, then I actually want to say again what it says. So if all of you've followed these steps, first you go to that person instead of going to Facebook or instead of going to somewhere else and commenting and creating camps saying he said, she said, that's not the first place you go. I don't actually think that that's the, that's ever the place that you go uh, because it, but but uh, you go first to the person and then what happens if you followed all of the steps then what happens is actually the trains coming so hopefully it's not too loud that if you go follow those steps then it says to treat them as an outsider now what did Jesus do with the outsiders he brought them in he as an unrepented sinner he brought them in he, that's what he did the, the disciples he brought them in he did not cast them out at that point he never casted them out it was always to bring them in and back into restoration however then what might possibly happen and this has happened in after confrontation has happened and we we haven't been able to resolve it then there might be a, a boundary that you put up but you never turn off love you never ever ever turn off love and a, a love covers a multitude of sins for everyone even if they are outside of your inner circle so maybe they move from your inner circle to an, the outer circle and so um, that's the biblical model of, com of love and how to love well is always to eradicate what is stopping you from being in unity. So that is the worship encouragement, my little mini sermon for this week. Um, don't be afraid of confrontation. I think that as a church, if we understood what, con what actually confrontation was supposed to do, we would be more readily available open to coming into that kind of a, an, uh, having an uncomfortable conversation it is uncomfortable I get it but it's way more uncomfortable to never talk to that person again or not to have a relation we're gonna be in heaven together so let's start the party here uh, and that brings me to unity's been August um, featured flag and we have just a few more days two more days for you to be able to pick that up before it goes away so that's going to be available and uh, leading into what's coming is the identity collection this is gonna be really really powerful I'm so excited about it so if you've been seeing on the Facebook posts uh, and Instagram uh, and in the email you'll know that there is a giveaway so we're celebrating the launch of our identity collection which is coming out on Tuesday if you're part of our VIP list by email you may have a little surprise about the about, about when the collection is going to be available as well as a little bonus so get on the list and the best way to get on the list is also to sign up for enter the giveaway so enter the giveaway we'll make sure that I get the post and a link for you to do that uh, to win $50 that you can spend on anything in the store including some of the old favorites is as well as the new collection so get that the winner will be announced uh, and the weekly on Monday morning uh, the contest to the giveaway closes at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Friday so you have to get that in if you're on the East Coast at 6 p.m. so make sure that your entry is in uh, another way that we have unity and have community is in our fire catchers group if you're not part of the fire catchers group I invite you to come into that group it is a very interactive very supportive and very engaging group and one of the the huge benefits of the group I think is the prayer thread we have a weekly prayer thread that uh, we're able I check it I know that Rosie is far more active in the group even as I am but I'm checking that and I'm watching and praying for you guys and so we pray for each other and I feel your prayers for me I'm so grateful that we have this community that I love you you love me I feel it and I wrote in here what my little secret weapon is now Rosie I asked Rosie what's what should I be talking about what do I need to make a point of because I always go off I go rogue and I forget the things I'm supposed to say and she facetiously said you know talked about how awesome she is no, that's not what her words those are my words she is my secret weapon she is the secret weapon for catch the fire worship flags amazing and I wish all of you had a Rosie in your life I'm quite certain that she doesn't wish that you all had an Andrea in your life but 
but she is the gem of of our Facebook group. Rosie is awesome. She is just such a blessing. And if you, she's shared a little bit about her story, um, be in prayer for her. She's going through a huge transition, um, as many of you are. And it's not we're all we're all in we're all in this journey um but the things that rosie's doing in spite of it all and, and being happy I was, <laughs> shut up yes you i love you and and honestly if you are in the group and you're on the facebook page you know you know rosie she's she's loved by you already so she does some of our teaching uh, and she has she's very gifted prophetically and so she'll give you a word but rosie is my secret weapon and so just love on her. Uh, I, I certainly um, love her and try to show my appreciation. Yeah. And finally, just a, a really quick, I'm going to be in Atlanta, Georgia um, with Christina, who does our silk. So she's going to be joining me there. And we uh, are, I'm teaching for a gift to dance, a gift of dance conference uh, in Atlanta, Georgia on September 28th and 9th. So I will be going from the, the Canadian North, West Coast, down to the South, uh, and joining. I'm so excited about that. That's going to be just a fabulous couple of days. Very, very full schedule. I think she said that the instructors have to be there at 7 a.m., ready to go on the 28th. Now, if you understand that that, for me, is five in the morning that I have to be up and ready. Now I'm usually up at five, but I'm not like ready to go. So that's going to be a very, very special uh, time. And if you're able to, to, we'll get the link for that. If you're able to be there, I would love to see you. And also if you're part of that conference, there is a very special promo of a pre-order 20% off flags, which um, is, is very unique. So if you, if you know, about our, our pricing system, you know that I don't often do the 20% off. So if you are part of that conference, you can actually take advantage of the, the promo and all of the flags will be available for pickup at registration. So that's another incentive to go to the a, a gift to dance. So thank you guys so much. Yeah, give Rosie just some love. She's awesome. And if you didn't see I don't know, Rosie, did you put it, post it in the group, your, your photo? She had an incredible flagging day and some beautiful places where the Lord took her. So we'd love to see that in the group if you haven't. I know you put it on your Facebook page. But uh, shout out to all of you guys. I love you. Be encouraged. Worship well. Bye.